Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So today I wanted to talk some more about some issues that may be affecting your backyard chickens and an issue that has unfortunately hit us. And so to help with some of uh, maybe new chicken owners or, or chicken owners that haven't experienced this before, uh, to kind of give you some information on it and how you can help mitigate the problem. So what is it that we're talking about today? It's mycoplasma. Uh, mycoplasma is a bacterial infection or disease that can affect uh, backyard flocks. It's in fact one of the most common respiratory diseases that can affect uh, or that can affect here your backyard flocks. So there are different types of mycoplasma that can affect uh, multiple species, plants, animals, even insects uh, and humans. There are some types. The two types that we're talking about today primarily affect backyard chickens, or I mean chickens in general, and turkeys. There's Mycoplasma G and Mycoplasma S. Uh, there's official scientific names. I'll put these up here on the screen so that you can see what the actual spelling is. I'm not gonna try to pronounce them though. But MG and MS are these two Mycoplasma uh, bacterial infections that can affect your flocks. So what are the symptoms? Symptoms can include many things. Uh, sneezing, uh, kind of raspy breathing, respiratory type issues. You may see a reduction in egg laying. Uh, there could be weight loss. They might not eat as much. Some chickens also have trouble walking. They may get swollen eyes, watery eyes, discharge around the eyes. Uh, and in more extreme cases, it could even result in death, especially if um, the mycoplasma infection that they have gets combined with maybe other medical issues that they might be having that you might not be aware of. If they're already not a healthy chicken or have another issue that's going on and then they get the mycoplasma, it could potentially kill your chicken. So with us here, we had a flock that we've had for almost four years now, or maybe it's been over four years, and completely healthy flock. I mean, we've had a couple that died off for different reasons over the years, sour crop, and, and uh, one was born not that well, and, and, uh, or hatched not that well. Uh, but, you know, in general, we had a healthy flock here. This year, we decided to add more chickens, got it from the uh, same breeder that we got our original flock from. Unfortunately, a couple of the chickens that came up, and maybe even all of them, Sorry, I just had chickens chasing each other and I thought she had a mouse, but she's just running around with a feather in her mouth. And the other one wanted it apparently. Anyway, uh, so we got our chickens here, or we got this new batch. A couple came up, one was sneezing, uh, and then we got a rooster that wouldn't crow. Um, he didn't really act like a rooster. He really didn't make any noise, uh, just, didn't do anything to help like get to know the girls, mate with the girls, protect the girls like our old rooster did. Uh, so we thought that was kind of weird, but we thought maybe it had something to do with, you know, the just, you know, chickens get stressed out when they move and stuff, and maybe it'd take him a little bit longer. Uh, but we were concerned about the sneezing one. Um, within two weeks or so of getting the rooster, he just up and died randomly. So, I took him to a local lab and had all the, the necropsy and the histology done, had all the tests done. And he tested negative for avian flu and you know some of the other really horrible things, but what he did test positive for was the mycoplasma G and S. Um, and if he had ongoing other issues because they said he didn't have any fat on him, he was very skinny even though he ate regularly with the girls, ate all the snacks, whatever, he was not putting on weight. So there was probably some other issue going on with him that uh, the mycoplasma, I think, did him in. So with mycoplasma, it's not curable and it's very spreadable. So once one chicken, hen or rooster, whether they, you know, either one, if they end up in your flock with it, you can kind of guarantee that all of your chickens are going to have it and will always have it for the rest of their lives. 
which is very unfortunate. Um, so, let's talk about mitigation. So they're always going to have it. You can't get rid of it. What can you do, you know, to keep your flock healthy or, you know, what is it that you do? So the first and most awful step, sorry, mosquito. The first and aw most awful step is you would call your flock. You would have to kill them all and get rid of them all. And then you would have to sanitize the whole area and probably not get any chickens for quite some time to just make sure that everything in, you know, your run, your coop and whatever was completely um, clear of this bacteria. Now, that might be an option if, you know, you have huge flocks and, um, you know, might, I don't know. For us, our chickens are our pets. We're not, they all have names. We know them all, we pet them, we talk to them, we hang out with them. And so killing off the flock is not uh, our option for us. Sorry, I got chickens, one's picking on the other and they're running all around me out here. Um, so what is then the next step? If you find out that your chickens have mycoplasma and you wanna keep your chickens and not kill them all off, then what do you do? Step one, you have to have a closed flock. You can't bring any new chickens in until that flock finally dies off of old age or, or for whatever other reason. Because any other new chicken that you bring in is going to get infected with this bacteria. There's no way around it. It is uh, highly transmissible. It will travel on your shoes, on like if you're using a shovel or a rake in the coop and you take it maybe to another coop of another coop that you have separated and you don't sanitize that stuff first or sterilize it, you can transfer it over there on your shoes, on your clothes. It can move back and forth very easily. It also travels like on the dust in the air uh, and that's why it, it's so infectious and in that basically once one bird has it, all the birds have it. So you need to close down the coop and not bring any new chickens in. And if you go anywhere where, like over a friend's house or something that has chickens, you definitely want to make sure that you are not wearing the same shoes and whatnot that you wear, you know, in your own coop because you could transfer it just by traveling from coop to coop. Or if you go to a chicken swap and bring it home from there or take it there, you know, there's all different ways they can, it can travel very easily. So close your flock. Then, the next step is using um, some type of treatment to keep the bad symptoms at bay. Because with these symptoms that I mentioned, not all birds will show it. They're, I mean, most of our birds look completely healthy. They don't, and, and they're acting completely healthy. They're, they're laying eggs, they're not sneezing. They don't have any of those problems. We have one or two birds that are sneezing more than normal and sound a little raspy. And so we're gonna treat the whole flock just to make sure that nobody else has the problem. So what do you use to treat it? Now there are multiple antibiotics that you can get with a prescription. However, one of the best things that you can use to treat um, mycoplasma to keep it at bay is Denigard. So Denigard is an over-the-counter treatment. It's also, uh, I think, I don't want to say primarily, but it's used a lot for pigs, for uh, respiratory diseases that pigs can have. Um, but you can use it in chickens in small doses. Um, Denigard is the brand name, and you can get this on Amazon and in Tractor Supply and in other areas. I'll put a link below to the one on Amazon. Uh, that's where we, I got this one. Um, but you can treat your chickens. This is a, a, a liquid, in liquid form, you put it in their water and it helps mitigate the symptoms, keeps them at bay. And I read several studies on various antibiotics and Denigard, and they found in the studies that I read that Denigard did the best at holding mycoplasma at bay and keeping the symptoms away. Um, so 
When you're using this, it's one tablespoon per gallon of water, and you would give it to them once a month for three to five days, depending on, like if you've got chickens that are very raspy and sneezy and whatnot, you might wanna do the full five days. If you don't have anybody really exhibiting any symptoms, you could probably do the three day. Uh, the great thing about this, unlike some of the other antibiotics and other prescriptions that you can get, is that there's no egg withdrawal. So if you are using your chickens for eggs, you don't have to throw the eggs away while they're on this. It doesn't transfer to humans. Uh, Denigard is metabolized by the chicken's liver and it passes through their system very quickly within 72 hours. However, if you are uh, raising chickens for meat, you have to wait two to three days at a minimum after the last treatment before slaughter and using the birds for meat. But for eggs, there's no withdrawal. You can uh, use the eggs the whole time that they are on this medicine. It, it's, it's okay uh, when you eat the eggs. The other great thing about the Denigard is that unlike some other antibiotics and stuff that chickens can take for different things, over time, they can build up a resistance to that. Denigard has not shown uh, any resistance buildup. So you could use this stuff for years. As long as your chickens are living and staying healthy, you can keep using this and it will keep working. They're not gonna build up a resistance to it and it will keep the issues away from the mycoplasma. One thing uh, with Denigard is you do not wanna use this with any other type of medication. If you have your chickens on some other type of medication, there could be uh, issues with, if you're using both at the same time, or if you're using like a medicated feed for some reason, uh, do not use Denigard without taking them off of the other medications first, or at the very least, uh, check with the vet and get the okay on what you can use with what, because sometimes there can be side effects and other issues. There may also be the random chicken that uh, can have I don't know, be allergic uh, to the main ingredient in Denigard. And um, I, I'll have this up on the screen what the main ingredient is. So it's, I can't, tiamulin hydrogen fumarate or something like that. I can't pronounce it. Uh, but there are a few chickens that might not react well to it occasionally. Uh, so when you are putting your chickens and your flocks on this, if you need to, monitor them, make sure that nobody's having some sort of weird reaction. And if that's the case, then take them off of it immediately and give them fresh water right away. From what I understand, it's, it's horribly bitter. And if you were just to put that tablespoon of the Denigard treatment into a gallon of water and give it to your chickens, your chickens probably would not drink the water. So what most people do and what we do is you add sugar to the water uh, or honey. We use about a quarter to a third cup of sugar per gallon when we add this in there. I know other people uh, also may use like apple juice or other fruit juices. However, one concern that I saw is that if you're adding like an apple juice concentrate or something like that, that could further dilute uh, your water and your solution with the Denigard. So you wanna make sure that you have all your measurements right, that you have an actual gallon of liquid um, to the one tablespoon so that you're getting the full dosage. But you will need some sort of sweetener, otherwise your chickens aren't gonna drink it. But when we used, I think the last time we used either a quarter or a third cup of sugar in a gallon of water for the one girl that we were treating initially with one tablespoon uh, to the gallon of water and she drank it all day long. She was fine with it. So I am now going to be treating my whole flock because uh, now that I've got the results back from the lab from the rooster that died and I know what's going on within my flock, now I will be treating the whole flock on a monthly basis with this. But it's only for three to five days. It comes in a big bottle, so it'll last you a while. And of course that will depend on, like we have our chicken waters on the ground, the water gets changed once a day or once every other day, depending on how much they walk in it. So um, if you have like a hanging waterer that might stay cleaner, you might be able to just fill it and then let them use it for a while. If you've got, you know, ones on the, you know, the bowls on the ground they drink out of that get more dirty, then you might have to change it out more often and then you might be using a little bit more of this. So, Mycoplasm G, Mycoplasm S, treating with Denigard. Um, it's an unfortunate thing that happened to our flock. And here's the thing is that when you get chickens from a breeder, uh, you know, the, I think it's the national, hang on, let me check my notes. National Poultry, uh, 
National Poultry Improvement Plan, uh, like if you are a breeder that sells chickens, uh, you're often required to do certain tests like for avian flu and a couple of the other like really highly awful diseases that affect chickens. However, mycoplasma is not one of the things that is required by the MPIP to test for for breeders and sellers. So even if your breeder or seller is MPIP sell, uh, certified, it's not gonna guarantee that uh, they don't have mycoplasma. Mycoplasma can come from wild birds and it can transfer from flock to flock. You know, it, it, it can just show up. So, and it's the most common bacterial disease that affects backyard chickens. So if you're just looking into getting chickens or learning about chicken diseases, before you go to a poultry swap or before you go and contact a breeder uh, or a seller, ask the question, have they been, has their flocks been tested for mycoplasma? Because once you get it, you can't get rid of it. So you want to ask that question first. And that's something that I wish I had known. Um, you know, I still consider myself a new chicken person having only had chickens for four years and so there's I'm still learning some of these things and in this case we're learning it the hard way you know now we have a an infected flock that we are gonna have to always treat as long as we have and we can't get any more chickens granted we've got you know 11 chickens now and we don't need any for a while but as they get older and stop laying um, without killing off the flock and starting over it's it's just an unfortunate thing to have to deal with. So I hope you found all that information helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them below. Uh, or if you have any other suggestions or what your experience uh, has been with mycoplasma and backyard chickens, feel free to comment below. But whatever's going on in your neck of the woods and with your chicken flocks, I hope that they are happy and healthy and that you're not dealing with mycoplasma. And if you are, then, um, you know, it is possible to maintain a flock with mycoplasma. It just takes some extra steps on a monthly basis. But other than that, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, we'll see you again soon. Namaste.